Well, happy Easter, my friends. It's a few days before Easter. Jesus is already uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, Sunday, a little, few days ago, he entered through the Palm Sunday procession into the city, and he's here every day. He is at the temple and going back to um, to Mount of Olives. He knows that soon he will be betrayed. Pilate will send him to the crucifixion and he will end his mission here until the next time. And this is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. There are a few people here because it's still the most important uh, holiday in Jerusalem. It's Easter time. But uh, tourists, well, there are only a few tourists here. Most of them are local people. Look at the soldiers that are here. Are they here to protect us? No. They are here to um, to study. Now, it's wartime, and this is the reason why half a million of tourists are not here. And this is the reason why I'm not working, sadly not working. But it's good because I do have time to visit in Israel and to upload videos for you. I'm honoring the tour at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and soon you will see how important how how different it is from a different uh, different days. Um, to um, Tio family from the Netherlands, um, they asked me to buy it for them. I will bless it in the church, in the most important places in the church. I will upload a video into YouTube and uh, I will of course send them the cross, the Jerusalem cross to their, um, to Netherlands. If you want to have it too, you can look at the description, the text, and you will find the link of Buy Me A Coffee and uh, you will understand how to get it as well. The facade of the church is late 11th century, beginning of the 12th century. Uh, the church was much bigger than the church of today. And not like today, um, it's, on, um, it's on by, um, I mean today it's on by Orthodox, all the Orthodox churches. Um, Catholic, Armenians, and uh, that makes it a little bit difficult. You know, I'm sure that you do have uh, your own church and it belongs to only your order, but that church belongs to everyone. And because of it, there are a million things to deal with. Um, one of them was who owned the church and who actually will open the church every day and who will close the the doors of the church every day, every night. Until then we found a solution for that, two Muslim families are opening uh, the door and closing the door, uh, not Christians, because if I'll get, I will uh, let the Catholic open it, then it means that they own the church, but the Greek Orthodox won't accept it. For example, the two people who are sitting there, the one who sits has got the keys to the church and he will close it tonight um, look at the ladder there it shows you the problematic here you can see the ladder I'm sure um, the two windows belongs to the Armenians they wanted to clean the windows from the outside and they took the ladder outside and started cleaning it but then the Greek Orthodox came to them and said who who told you that you can do that the facade belongs to everyone until they figure out who owns the facade. No one will move the ladder. And as you can see, no one maintained the facade. Sad, isn't it? Let's enter the church. But you will see a million things here. And it, if you already visited the church or saw my videos, you know that it's actually different than, um, than uh, last time. Before we'll enter, let me show you a creek in the column. And according to history, in Easter time, Saturday after Easter, the, um, there's a special tradition held by the, Arme by the Armenian and the Greek Orthodox, and it's called the Holy Fire. 
They were supposed to be together inside the church, but the Armenian, according to the Greek Orthodox, uh, bought the uh, place for themselves from the Muslims, and they were the only one who did it. And according to the Orthodox, at that year, the fire one didn't went to the... Um, um, uh, to the, I mean, uh, to the tomb of Jesus, but through the creek. Then that shows you the tension between people. Now look what's happening here. They're renovating the floor. It took them hundreds of years to understand that the floor that you see here is old and people are falling here and they must do something with it. See, I'm right. Another thing that actually happened, they moved, because they actually renovated it, they, they took the anointing stone and moved it to a different place. I'm almost sure that it wasn't here, it was a little bit further than that, but again, I have to check it. But this is where they... Um, they um, uh, anointed the body of Jesus after the, after he died. The ladder that you see here has got nothing to do. But according to the status quo, that ladder will be here from Hash Wednesday until Pentecost. Belongs to the Catholic. No one is using it, but it's here. Catholics say, this is mine, and it will be here every year. Uh, let's climb up to the Golgotha. The church is not as empty as it used to be. A lot of the um, Christians from Israel are visiting it, and few tourists. I met, I met at least ten tourists today. We climb up to the Golgotha. The Golgotha is divided into two. This part is the Catholic part. The other part, it's a Greek Orthodox part. Let's start with it. There are a few stations of the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross, the way of the misery, inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. One station is here, and that's where they um, took the, the unclothed, uh, they stripped Jesus from his clothes, and they had a lot about who will get it. Here, you can see where they nail him to the tomb, Mr. Teo. Let me bless it here. I know that you are Catholic. I mean, your family is a Catholic family, and I know that you are a believer, and I know that your father is not with us anymore, but he is in a spirit, and I'm sure that he can actually bless you as well here. Above it, you can see Mary, the mother, and Mary Magdalene anointing his legs, and the Roman soldier is here too. After the nailing to the cross, they crucified him, but the Catholics got another uh, station of the Via del Rosa, and this is in the Via del Rosa, in the Catholic area. That's why you can see the Pietà, just after nailing to the cross. Although first we have to deal with the crucifixion itself. Look at Mary with a spear in her heart. It's a very touching story about a mother who's been here together with a firstborn son, Jesus, at the Jewish temple, which is not so far away from here, but according to the Christian, this is the obvious place. And Saint Simon, a Jewish priest, told her, Mary, your son will die in front of your eyes. It will be, it will be like a spear entering to your heart. 
to your heart, then in that case, the Pietà is next to it. Let me stand in the line and let me bless the cross exactly at this crucifixion spot. There's a, beneath the table there's a hole and you can put your hands in it and touch the bedrock of the Golgotha, the skull hill. On the cross you can see that the sin list of Jesus, Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews, to the right of uh, Jesus, you can see John the disciple, right there. To the left, you can see Mary, the mother. Can you understand what's happening to Mary right now when she sees her son suffers? Jesus will tell us soon, mother, I mean, woman, um, this is your son, and he talks to John. John, this is your mother, take care of her. Without that, she won't survive. This is the bedrock of the Golgotha. It's covered with a glass, simply because people like me want to take some souvenirs. You can see another thing there. It's the creek. Remember, after he died, there was a earthquake. Here it is. Let us enter and let me bless the cross. The story of the Holy Week is just above us at the Greek Orthodox Chapel. For example, they are beating and mocking Jesus. They are forcing him to wear the king's wear. Ah, you are the king of the Jews, they say. They laughed at him. Judas kiss. God I don't got so many. In front of the high priest. Sorry, in front of the high priest, Pilat is right here. Let's leave the Golgotha and uh, together with Jesus. We will anoint his body and prepare him for the burial. That place was closed until two days ago. I'm almost sure that the anointing stone was here. And moved to here now. I don't know if uh, for for the rest of the time or only until they will finish to prepare it. But you can see that at the anointing table, they are purifying the body of Jesus. Then let's talk about what's happened here. The 
on Friday until Sunday. Actually, here it's until only Friday. Crucifixion, Golgotha, Skull, Skull Hill. Joseph of Arimathea is already here because his garden is right there and he will give Jesus his own tomb. That's where they anointed the body because Jesus himself was a Jew and he was buried just like every Jew until today at the same day. They will peer for the body, they will put a shroud around him including the face and they will bury him. The anointing stone is right here. You can see that the anointing oil is on it. The Kidli. I ask uh, someone who actually been here every day, they remember the Muslim guy who opens and closes the door, if the location of the anointing stone is the same location, he said yes. What is missing here is the lamps above, but she's taking a picture and I don't want to disturb her as well, then let's wait until she will finish it. And then I want to anoint the cross of you, uh, Johan, actually, uh, Johan uh, uh, Tio from uh, Netherlands. All right. Wow, can you see my hand? Full with oil. Some people actually tell tells me that they, when they are getting it, they can still smell the anointing gall. For me, it's equal as uh, to a perfume itself. Let's continue to the tomb. You can see they're still dealing with um, um, the floor. They're measuring the church, and you can see a lot of signs like that. And we just left, actually, the uh, Armenian chapel. That's where, according to the Armenian, the women saw the crucifixion, which was right there. The tomb is in front of you. As you can see, it's empty because no one is here. Sadly, I cannot go into the tomb um, with a camera, but I already did it, John, Johan. Uh, already did it, then let me describe a thing. The articula, the structure is new because it's been destroyed so many times. The last time that it'd been destroyed was in 1808 by fire, who destroyed the dome and the tomb and actually most of the church. The structure, the articula, has got two. Uh, chapels. The first one is the angel chapel who took care that no one will steal the body of Jesus and if you're talking about the book of Matthew you know that um, there were gods here that because the Jews believed that the, someone will come and steal the body of Jesus and they fell asleep here. The inner part is the tomb itself. Um, the first part you can see the candlelight. This is the holy fire. I mean, yeah, a result of the holy fire. Remember at the beginning of the tour, we talked about it, that the holy fire, wait a minute, let me take a picture of it. The holy fire goes down from the roof to here. Some people ask me why I'm not uh, visiting, I mean, not part of the uh, holy fire uh, Saturday, holy Saturday, mainly because there are too many people who are here and they deserve to do that more than me. I'm not a Greek Orthodox then. Um, this time, because there are not a lot of uh, uh, tourists, I will try to do that, but I cannot promise you that I will. Let me take you to see another tomb, which is next to here. Why am actually very important for me to show you the tomb? Because some of the Christians, mainly the Protestants, the Anglicans, and some of the Protestants, believes that the church is not here. And uh, sadly, the only comment that I'm getting from a minority of those people is that I'm a liar. It's a little bit sad for me um, to hear it, but let's talk a little bit about that, although it's noisy. At the late 
18, beginning of the 19th century, actually 19th century, um, some of the Protestants discover a place that looked like a skull, and they looked for a tomb there, and they found the tomb, and the rich man's garden that we are in it. And the most important thing, it's outside the uh, city. They know, and everyone knows actually, that Jesus wasn't crucified inside the city. It was crucified outside the city. But today, that church is at uh, Times Square of Jerusalem. But you must know something. That church was built only in the 4th century. Until then, the Romans didn't allow us to build churches. And you must understand something else. That city is different than 2,000 years ago. Think about how, how big, or if your city actually exists 2,000 years ago. And some scholars believe, and actually a lot of them, that that part was outside the city, outside the walls. Then the only thing that I will ask you to do is to visit the garden tomb, which is the second place, and this place, and fill whatever you fill and decide whatever you want to decide uh, as the uh, it's not a prayer, as the guide at the garden tomb said to me, tell them, tell your uh, people who are watching that video to pray here and there, and then to decide by themselves. Then you know, you know what? Do that. But there is another reason why uh, I can show you that that place was after the city. Because we are going to see a tomb from the time of Jesus inside the church. And it's not the only tomb. Then it shows us that it could be out of the city. And here it is. We will talk about why the room looks like that soon. But first, let's talk about what's happening here. Let me try to light. All right, now we can see better. You can see niches in it. And I think some of them are still closed. Let me go in. i show it to you, but an old. That's closed. And there's another two places that are closed. And someone asked me to take a video of that wall, I don't know why, but because he told me to do that, and I can do that, then here it is, this is part of, and this is not part of the tomb. That wall was built together when they built the church in the fourth century. Oops, then look at the niches. You can see that it's in the size of a human being. And let me go outside because it's a little bit spooky, and let's talk about it there. We already know that the Jews have been buried at the same day. A day ends at sunset. Then in that case, I don't need the flashlight now. I must save the battery for you. Then the pier for this body and bury at the same day. Joseph of Aramitia, that his garden was next to the Golgotha, and this is the reason why it's in the same roof now, under the same roof now, gave Jesus his own tomb. He was a rich man from the Sanhedrin that believed in secretly at, uh, in uh, Jesus. Then in that case, they used to put the body in one of those niches, and then here later, two years later, when they had no more space, they used to open the tomb. They used to take the bones out and put it in a small box by the name Osiri. And then the Osiri was taken to a storeroom together with everyone else from the same family. And then they could bury someone else instead. One thing that is missing here is the Rolling Stone. Now, why it's very important? Because uh, Joseph of Aramitia and Nakdiminos 
gave Jesus a tomb that no one used before. In that case, the tomb outside it used to be the tomb of Jesus. Now because the enemies of the Christians didn't like the story of Jesus, that tomb been destroyed so many times, but that tomb didn't. Although man said when they built the fourth century church, they built a wall here, they cut the tomb into few pieces. And still, it shows you that people have been buried here at the time of Jesus. The Jews used to bury their dead outside the city. Later on, I will try to convince you that that place was out of the city, but stay with me. It's going to be a long, a long um, tour. Uh, I'm going to, um, I might going to cut the videos into few, then, then you will have, for example, a tour of uh, um, uh, the, uh, this tomb by itself later on. If you're watching that video, and it's already 26 minutes, then you are special people. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me, you can support me by PayPal or um, buy me coffee links, which are at the description, the text beneath the video, or next to the like button, which is, you can see a shape of a heart. This is super thanks. Why? First of all, why not? Secondly, I'm not working for the last half a year because of the war, and I'm not sure that I will work soon, then uh, you are my only income, then I will be happy to do that. But the most important thing, I, mean, I will be happy if you will do that, but the only important thing is, and this is very important for me, send that link of the video to everyone that you know and ask them to subscribe to my channel. This is the best present that you can give me. Now, what's happening here? And the room looks horrible, isn't it? It really looks horrible. But it looks horrible because there are dusty fighting who owns that room. Is it belong to the Armenians? Um, Coptic? Uh, sorry, the Syrianic Church, Church of Syria, or the um, uh, Ethiopians? And until they figure out who owns it, no one will maintain that room. This is not a church, this is an altar that was burned down in 1808. And you can see the hash from that time all over. But that room is so important because this is part of the only, I mean, only one of the few evidence from the first church ever, fourth century church, from that wall to all over. And you can see some holes in the wall, for example here, that shows you that it used to be covered with marble. And here you can see so many, because they knew that that tomb of, of Joseph of Ravitia, remember he gave Jesus his own tomb, then he had to build himself his tomb, and Nagdimenos as well, then that was a very important uh, chapel. Let's go outside and let's pray that they will find a solution about who owns that room. Uh, meanwhile, look what's happening here. This is the most important place for two-thirds of the Christians. Sadly, they look, it doesn't look sad. Their chapel belongs to the uh, Copts, the Egyptian. And it's very important because it's close to the tomb of Jesus. Let's continue, but before we will continue, I mean, not before. Sadly, we cannot enter into a cathedral and it's noisy here because they're cleaning one of the lamps. But you can, you can see that Greek Orthodox Cathedral. Yep. 
and they are maintaining it as well. The most important thing is, can you see the maroon rope? Behind it there is a stone. According to tradition, this is the center of the world. Then I'm usually entering with the groups to here and making a round tour around it. Let's continue. There are 14 stations at the Via della Rosa. Some of them you already know, and I forgot to mention that the tomb is one of them. And of course, the resurrection was here on Sunday. And this is for me the 15th uh, station, although it's not part of, uh, part of the Via della Rosa. That is where Mary Magdalene saw Jesus. Mary, Mary Magdalene is standing here. And uh, Jesus was standing there, and she, saw, she, th she thought that he was the gardener. And you can see the Palm Sunday procession. Palm. But he told, uh, he told her, go and tell the disciples that I'm uh, resurrected. In Matthew, they will meet him in the Galilee area. Um, but in the others, um, uh, Gospels, they will meet him as, uh, in Jerusalem as well. Women, 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 the power of women, the power of women. Uh, where, the, where, where the men? No, not here. Um, Jesus actually gave the ladies, the women, Mary Magdalene was one of them, uh, a mission, go, go and tell it to the disciples. For so many years, the church was controlled by the Muslims. Then there are restrooms here as well. They decided who will enter and how much they will pay for that. From uh, 18, 19th century, late 19th century, the um, European countries forced the Ottomans to cancel it, and from that moment you can enter. But the keys are still at the Muslim hands, mainly because uh, now when you can have the place for yourself, who owns it? Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Armenians? Then instead of fighting with each other, argue with each other, they decided to give their keys to the Muslims, and they are doing it. Wait a minute, it's noisy. There's a kind of an elevator that works here. There are a few prisons of Jesus in the city. Remember, uh, he was uh, waiting for his trial by Pontius Pilate. At the high priest house, he had uh, his own prison as well. And when he came to here, although it's not mentioned in the Bible, he had to wait for his crucifixion, and according to tradition, this was the prison of Jesus inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I want you to see how it looks like. Look at the two holes, and look at the painting. You can see that they used to put the legs of the prisoners there, tie the hands, and uh, he was waiting for his, um, his moment. Johan, if it's okay by you, um, I will bless uh, the father, late father, and the mother of uh, a very good friend of mine. Later on, I will light a candle for her. I, it's uh, Bethy. And I will mention, always mention, her husband with her, E.J. She's already part of the family, just like you, Johan. 
she never been in Israel. I mean, she was in Israel. She never met me. I met her in COVID time through the video. There are a few chapels here. And I want, you to search, I want you to see another important chapel. This is an Armenian chapel, the Spear Chapel. The Spear itself is in uh, Yerevan. I almost saw it, but when I came to Yerevan, it was in the States. Then I didn't see the real one, I saw the replica of it. Let's enter to the lowest part of the church. Yes. And I don't know why it's noisy. Are they cleaning here too? Might be. But I think you can still hear me. Why, they are not, why the floor here looks okay is because that place belongs to the Armenians and they already did it. Um, the, the tiles, the floor that they are now um, maintaining is the floor of their public places of the church. They belong to everyone. It took them years to understand and said to do that, but they're doing it. Sadly, the, uh, beneath here, there's a beautiful mosaic floor of the cities that have been destroyed by the uh, Ottomans. They uh, butcher 1.5 million of the Armenians. And this is a beautiful memory of the Armenians. Now, why the Armenians got a lot of places here? Mainly because uh, they were the first nation who converted into Christianity. Got it? Not like private people. I'm talking about the nation, the king and the rest. They've been converted to Christianity at 301 AD. Uh, St. Helen and Constantine only started to do that in 324 AD. And in that case, they've been here before everyone. This is the first Christian nation, Armenia. It's a beautiful city. Uh, sorry, it's a beautiful country. But we are, Mr. Tio going to the um, lowest place um, in the church. And the lowest place is usually the most ancient part of it. How do I know that it's a Catholic chapel? This painting is Armenian, but that one, let me put the cross here. That one is Catholic. In that case, let's enter to, let's leave the Armenian chapel, which is a very important chapel. Through there, you can actually go down to see the uh, um, uh, temple, the Roman temple uh, um, evidence, I mean, from uh, first century. They are talking there, then I will, um, I will uh, talk here. That chapel used to be a quarry from the time of King Herod. A quarry is always outside the city. There's no reason to have a quarry inside the city. Not only pollution, it's real estate. Then in that case, it shows you that it was outside the city. And later on, they use it as, um, um, as um, a water system for the city. And in the fourth century, according to tradition, uh, St. Helen found here the true cross. This is where the true cross was found.
she found the three crosses. You know that Jesus was crucified with another two. The bad and the good thief. And uh, one of them was converted to Christianity while he was already on the cross. It's difficult to see, but let me use a flashlight as well. Let me see, let me see. There's a beautiful fresco that describes the crucifixion. All right. You saw it. And, yeah, I'm gonna use the, wait a minute, I'm gonna use the flashlight again because it's very dark now here. And you can see the quarry. From the time of King Herod. You can see the plaster as well. And he used to cover the walls later on with the plaster to create the water system. We don't need a flashlight. Here it is. You can see the bucket holes. Right there. And this is St. Helen. And we are blessing the cross. Betty, I met you here. I met you here. I remember the, one of the first things that I did for you is to uh, bless you at uh, the day that you found uh, uh, the true cross in September. I still remember it. It was very important for me because you are the first one who knew that uh, uh, supporting me was a very important thing. And thank you for that. Before we are saying goodbye, I want to show you one more place, uh, which is very important, but let's first climb those stairs. And you can see there, graffiti of so many crosses. There's a debate if it's from the Crusader time or not. What a policeman is doing here, maybe he's actually visiting, but because there are so many um, debates, let's say it in a good way, uh, the police are very close to here. There's a police station here. According to the Greek Orthodox, this is the stone that Jesus was sitting on it, and the Roman soldiers were laughing at him and beat him. You can see that. Well, I know that you are that you are not a Greek Orthodox, but I know that you're accepting everyone as them. Let me see if you can see it. Yes, I think you can see it. They put it the tone of horn on his head. I lost around 15 kilos. And how do you know that it's okay, that I'm feeling better? Because usually when I'm climbing those stairs, I cannot breathe. Ah, ah, now it's, I feel like a young man. I'm 12 years old again. This is the bedrock. We actually have been on top of the hill, on top of the Golgotha. And this is part of the Golgotha itself. According to the Bible, when Jesus died on the cross, so many people resurrected. Remember the earthquake? And blood of tears fell through the creek and so many people woke up. According to ancient tradition, one of them was Adam. According to ancient tradition, I know that not all of you accept it, Jesus himself went down to limbo. And by his power, he won the, war, the battle between uh, him and the devil. And so many people resurrected. A lot of them were holy people, the fathers. Um, and one of them was Adam itself. Then according to that, 
this is the tomb of Adam. And that will actually answer you why it can be the tomb, because, you know, you said the flood actually uh, destroy every place on earth. But that is true, but at that time it wasn't here. And if we are talking about tombs, the two tombs of the first two crusader kings here have been destroyed by the Greek Orthodox. I must say that the Greek Orthodox and the Armenian at that time were in good friends. And we are back at the anointing table. And let's go outside to say goodbye. And then I will go and light a candle um, for Tio family, for you, for everyone who are watching uh, that video, and uh, to Betty's parents. Excellent weather, excellent day. I feel so lucky to be with you in those 46, 47 minutes. And let's hope that we will find peace and tourists will come back again because I missed you, I miss you so much. Thank you very much. Bye bye.